Let's talk about Comar and a civil campaign by Lois McMaster Bujold, uh, which are bound up with Winterfair Gifts, a, sh a novella, long short story in Miles in Love, uh, which is the penultimate bind up. There is actually one more Miles, Mutants and Microbes, which I haven't reviewed here, uh, which I'll be reading and reviewing this year. And then it's any novels that haven't yet been bound up uh, and may never be, I suspect. Uh, these are books. Let's try to think about what they are. Um, to 11 and 12 maybe of the Volkosgan saga I think that's it uh, Winterfair Gifts was actually written not directly after the civil campaign though it's an epilogue to it uh, really but it was written after the next novel Diplomatic Community and she does say in her afterward how much she loathes writing um, prequels uh, but uh, it seemed justified especially since it's not really a prequel to Diplomatic Community it's more a post call what do we used to call those to a civil campaign? There's a telling review or pull quote on the back from Anne McCaffrey. Georgette Hire has met her match for intrigue and style. And the dedication is for Jane, Charlotte, Georgette and Dorothy. Long may they rule. I think the Dorothy, I think is Dorothy Sayers. Georgette Hire, Charlotte Bronte, Jane Austen. So the this is where she turns her hand for the first time since... Um, well, certainly, really since Shards of Honour, but to a less degree, Barry R. a couple of years later, which I think that was, it was nominated for, and I think it won the Hugo. Uh, but for the first time, for a decade, more or less, she turns her hand, or over a decade, to uh, romantic stories. And um, she, she, said, she describes that Komar is a romantic drama, and Civil Campaign is a romantic comedy. And the, those she gestures towards, in, in, in discussing that, she might she talk about people like Jane Austen, particularly for the comedy. It's also very much draws on Shakespeare, and there's a there's a bit of a hint of that from her own uh, afterward. There's no spoiler in me saying that. I'm just saying influences you can tell. Uh, I'll offer a bit more commentary on on these as I go. Obviously, the absolute zero spoiler review, uh, requiring no knowledge of the Volkosgan saga, um, is that. Uh, these, I very much enjoyed them. Komar is, is really quite good. It's not as good as Memory or Mirror Dance, the previous two in the series, which are um, two. And I think Mirror Dance won the, the Hugo, possibly, or at least was nominated for it. Memory, I think, didn't win. I think it was nominated. But it's, Komar is not much of a step down, but it is a slight step down, but it's very, very good. There's, it's Miles in mystery solving mode, basically. The main character, Miles Volkosgan. He's mystery solving, that's a common... Uh, common Bujol thing and I think um, it has it deals with the fact that you know we're beginning to do with Mars is growing up and he he's trying to settle his love life um, and you know, that, that's the basic premise of him being in love and Komar kind of has a, a quite different and subtle and careful take on that and a civil campaign continues to deal with that um, that theme of Miles trying to settle down um, and is 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 funny and has uh, some great new characters in it. Um, there's a character called Catherine who's very good in these books. Uh, but I think a civil campaign is a slight step up down again. It, this is not the opinion of Goodreads. Goodreads rates it uh, like his second high, her second highest rated Volkosgan book. Uh, but I think um, there are just stylistic and structural problems, particularly stylistic issues, uh, which then sometimes cause structural problems. Um, which betray that her her focus perhaps wasn't always on the prize of what is the idea, what is the story, what are the characters. Um, Winterfair Gifts is as is very short, and this is the only review I really need to give to it. It's very, it's very, it's fun. I really enjoyed Winterfair Gifts, um, and it, in a sense, it, be, it improved my opinion of a civil campaign after the fact, as it connects to a civil campaign. If you like. Um, the Volkosgan saga in general or if you're thinking about getting into it and you're wondering how it continues on this these are good uh, certainly very big development novels uh, for certain aspects of the world um, and there's some good mild stuff in it moving on to if you've read other Volkosgan books and you're more or less up to date up to mirror dance memory particularly memory because that's relevant here um, light spoilers for those books nothing heavy and I will attempt to bridge the gap because these two books connect in a way that only a few other books do. So Shards of Honour and Barry are obviously connect uh, in the sense that um, their events are, you know, that they are about Aaron and Cordelia 
and they're about the early days of things. To a lesser degree, Warrior's Apprentice and Vorgame connect a little bit, but not very much. You know, that's that's less uh, stressed. Uh, other others like uh, Setaganda and Ethan of Athos literally don't connect really. Um, so, you know, in terms of the connect the collections here, they're they're sometimes more connected, sometimes less. Here, these two are very much um, connected. So, um, the Komar blurb. What Marvel Cosigan has sent to Komar, a planet that could be a garden with a thousand more years of terraforming or an uninhabitable wasteland if the terraforming project fails. The solar mirror vital to the project has been shattered by a ship hurtling off course and Mars has been sent to find out if it's an accident or sabotage. But once there, um, yeah, essentially things go down, things go down. He discovers an unexpected ally, one with wounds as deep and honour as beleaguered as his own. Um, and uh, th this this person on planet who could be of help to him is a Catherine. There's a lot of other cast members, uh, but a Catherine is a fantastic character, a very very strong character uh, who I thoroughly enjoyed, um, and is is a POV character at points. And Komar is, um, you know, is is Mars in mystery mode. As I say, he's an Imperial auditor. He's off doing mystery stuff, and. Um, I think the only way in which I saw this is a step down from memory or mirror dance is how good those books are, how finely poised they are. Um, and that I think where there are some affecting plots to do with Ekaterin dealing with, you know, difficulties in her domestic life and trying to, you know, she's married, she's got a son. Um, life is hard in some ways. She's trying to work out who she, you know, what's going on, who she is in the midst of all this. Um, the, uh, and, and Miles is is growing up post memory. Um, I think if there is any struggle or problem uh, compared to memory uh, and mirror dance, it is that the emotional stakes there are both high and they are high here, certainly very high, but they're so finely poised and executed and realistic, um, and that they don't rely really on any uh, any artificial device. In, by that I mean in, in storytelling terms, not in world terms. Um, any kind of cheap device to get us there. And there are some cheap character devices here, uh, and uh, which we, we just kind of slightly soften everything. But it's, it's very good. Komar is very good. Uh, Civil Campaign has basically has a problem where we spend time on Barrier. It's, it's a big dom domestic story on Barriar. I really enjoyed that. It's a big sprawling plot with loads of characters, loads of subplots, immensely enjoyable. That side of it is, is fun. It approaches farce and in much more of a Shakespearean way than a Austenian way. Um, and I greatly enjoyed that kind of side. And she, pull, she pulls it all together. She, But there are, I say this, and I'm saying this with high praise because I did enjoy it and it was often funny, but there are a couple of things running that just, I think let that down and made it one of the weaker of all books despite the popular opinion is against me so listen to that if you will but what I mean is this or uh, let, let's let's put it this way is that she's always seemed um and there were to this in in both Komar and a civil campaign but she's always seemed Bujold as if if in Volkoskin terms she has a a, a beaten brain and a barrier and heart uh, that she is modern and progressive like the Beta Colony, though she occasionally hints there may be issues even with the wonderful modern progressive Beta Colony, but that she, uh, her, her own intuitions and instinct, moral instincts, sympathise much more with Barry R than she can account for. Uh, I mean, that's, that's not psychoanalysis of actually, the actual author, Lois McMaster Bujold, I only mean the words she puts on the paper. And here that disappears in a book that largely just doesn't seem to like Barry R or the people who live there or anything that's ever happened there. And it's mostly about how bad it is. Um, and uh, and how comically bad it is and how fun it is to upset that and, uh, and to have, you know, Shakespearean changes of opinion and character. And essentially, I like the, this, it ain't Shakespeare. The, the point is there's not, the dramatic artifice is and the subtleties and multi-layers that often go into Shakespearean um, dramatic reversals and just aren't here at various levels, particularly the fact that for Shakespeare, as I say, there are multiple layers and very often a character undergoing that kind of reversal has either been well developed to uh, justify that reversal or there is something else going on in the reversal. And that's just not the case here as different things happen, as events occur. 
And, but the other thing is that there, this is not a mystery novel. There are mystery elements. There must be. It's a bourgeois book, but it's not a mystery novel. Um, it is a domestic farce and a political farce with all these different interlinking things to do with um, the different plots interlinking and uh, crazy events happening and um, uh, and so on. And there, there's a bunch of ways in which, uh, and I think she mentions this in the afterward, she's attempting to use that, and, and this is both in the politics and the kind of domestic side, the results of technology, which is a Bujoldian, Volkoskian thing, how the results of technology materially affects society. Her big thing has always been the uterine replicator. And there is a thing there where I just thought an interesting thing I've picked up in several Volkoskian books is the way in which um, the uterine replicator removes uh, the whole experience of, because women don't give birth. Um, the you know, there's no longer any witness to whether or not that is a a, a positive experience. Sometimes it's because it's wholly negative, barbaric experience. And I, I think that's I think that's her attempting to represent a um, what she thinks would happen with that technology. It's led some very interesting comments on her about politics. Or, you know, off off topic, just when people ask her about it, about the politics of the future, which I, I found really interesting. But uh, here, all the the political things and the domestic things. So often, as I say, it is very obvious that there is one view and everyone's going to have to lump it and um, it's being hammered at you. And there's no subtlety. There's no attempt to, as there occasionally would be with General Peter Volkosigan, that, you know, maybe there's more to this. Or at least maybe there's something to the code of honour and the, the way of life on Barry R. Occasionally, there is one hint of this, of balance about why Barry R is like it is compared to Beta Colony in terms of how they deal with particular social issues. Um, but generally speaking, there's none of that. And this leads in a couple of cases to what seem to me essentially ridiculous developments. Things, I don't mean developments in terms of in themselves ridiculous or impossible, but where uh, a particular issue is put up domestically or um, politically. And it's not just that I think the reverse was too neat or cheap, but I mean, I actually th I think the, the subplot is ridiculous. It's something that just doesn't have any truth to it in the situation um, is... Uh, simply there to to argue something outside of the world, not to do... I, it, it pretends to be about the technology, but it's about something outside. And this is not to say that, you know, I've, I've never minded Bourgeois politics. You know, half the time I agree with them, half the time I disagree. But I know that I and um, this, you know, I think about having just reviewed Time Machine as well. This is something that where... I, I think there is a thing where the, the artist or author can never separate their religion, their beliefs, um, their hopes from the art. Ignore Martin Amos on that, complete hogwash. But that all has to be sublimated into the art. And I think a civil campaign um, is one, a masterpiece in some ways and fatally flawed in others because this, there's a separation and a didactic voice takes over uh, which no longer serves the very ideas that she's trying to communicate but instead poisons them. Um, I enjoyed it. This this is a, a very kind of lengthy praise, master's condemnation. Um, but it's something hard to explain because, and delicate to explain, because you think, well, how far can you, how, I, I want to be like, I didn't like this, but I did like this very in loads of detail. Uh, but I think um, it's it's well worth reading. If you're keeping going through and if you enjoyed Komar and want to see how some of the things in that shake out, um, there's great stuff with Gregor and with Ivan as well. And, you know, you get, a bit, bit of stuff with, with um, Aaron and Cordelia coming back in um, in a civil campaign. Um, and I like them on stage and we don't get very much of them. Uh, but I, you know, certainly liked having Ivan. I certainly liked having Gregor. Lots of Gregor over the two books. Uh, the Emperor. Uh, so yeah, well worth continuing on. And Winterfair Gifts is, which has a, a great turn from Sergeant Tora uh, coming to Barry R. Uh, it's a really fun story, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and yeah, I I think it was it was in a collection like a third, you know third party edited collection to begin with, but it's in Miles and Love. It's an excellent epilogue that made us all campaign better to me, as I already said. Uh, so yeah, I I recommend them, especially Komar um, in terms of the novels. Um, I'm looking forward to I think of the next couple, Falling Free, which is in time wise kind of a prequel. It's about people unconnected to the Volkosigans. Um, gets lesser reviews, but Diplomatic Community gets quite good reviews. So I'm quite looking forward to those, uh, and I will read those this year. Uh, but I think, you know, w w it feels like we've peaked 
But it's interesting that for Bujol, this is not that she then, oh yeah, from about 2000, she stops being any good. She actually then turns to fantasy uh, as her chief thing after diplomatic community. She only writes three more for Cosigan books in, you know, 15 years or whatever on a novella. But she turns to the world of the five gods and writes, most importantly, Curse of Chalion and Paladin of Souls, which are both fantastic books. Uh, so I don't think it's that she had lost it. I think that possibly just maybe this is part of the shift is that what she felt she could say and deal with and communicate about character and world through the Volkosgan saga had begun to thin and maybe that's represented there. Anyway, if you've read these books, please tell me what you think in the comments uh, and I'll see you next time.